I hope that you had a wonderful time praising God. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you worship God? Did you? I hope, I hope you had quite an enjoyable time. And so, welcome. Welcome to a time of learning. Before we even begin, yes, what you are learning today, I would like us to reflect on what we learned last week. What did we learn last week? Last week we were speaking about living our best life today. Yes, living our best life now. And so we learned a few things that were um, causing us to um, uh, think about how it, how it is to live our best life right now and even what it means. Yeah? And so I'd like to ask you, do you remember what we learned? We said for us to be, live our best lives, what do we need to do? Yes, any takers, mummies, daddies, help um, me listen to these young ones even as they share what they learned. Mm -hmm. We say that to live our best lives now is to live fully for, live fully for God. Yes, and so we have to take everything that has to do with our lives and give it to God. And how do we live our best life now? How do we live our best life now? We say that we live our best lives through doing what? Mm -hmm. There were three points that we covered. And those three points are the ones that I'm asking. We also learned a memory verse in the book of Romans. Do you remember Romans where? Hmm? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Can you remember? Can you remember? How about the three points that we learned? Mm -hmm. Can you remember? And so at this moment, I'd like to invite you to go back to your notes and to look at what we covered. Yes, and to remind yourself, because part of it was be joyful and to do our part. Part of it was saying that we prayerfully, uh, we, 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 we praise through everything that we do and we live also in the moment, we live presently, we live now. That means we don't live in the past and we don't live in the future. Is that fine? Is that fine? Yes. And so, having looked at how we live our best life now, today we're going to ask ourselves, or we are going to look into seeing that which God sees. Hmm? Seeing that which God, that which God sees. And so for this one, I'd like to ask you, just imagine, when God looks at you, what does he see in you? Yeah? Does he see a brave, courageous, young uh, boy and girl? Or does he see um, somebody who lacks in confidence, somebody who is shy, somebody who does not have strength. What do you think God sees? Yeah? Share. Share with those you are with at home. What do you think when God looks at you, he sees? Knowing that this is the same God that tells us not to fear, this is the same God who tells us in the Lord that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hmm? What do you think when God sees? When God looks at us, what does he see? If today you were given the eyes of God, what would you see? What would you see? And so some of, some of you say, uh, God sees me as tiny as I am, as little as I am. Eh? Reminds me of a song that we sing in, 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 um, in, in, in kids' church. He's got the little tiny babies in his hands. He's got the little tiny babies in his hands. He's got the little tiny babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. And so asking you, to this God who has everything in his hands, if you're given his perspective, that means you're given to see that which God sees. What do you think you will see? Eh? You will see people as tiny, tiny people. That's what you're going to look at today. That's what you're going to look at today. And so we are going to elevate our sight to seeing what God sees. We are going to do what? To elevate our sight to seeing what God sees. And so, when you look at yourself, I've asked you, what do you see? Maybe you might be seeing, um, yeah, yourself not looking like that much. But then, here is, here is a statement or a phrase I would like us to remember through and through. The statement says, I may not look like it, but God sees me as a mighty warrior. I may not look like it, but God sees me as a mighty, as a mighty warrior. Yes. When God sees you, he does not see the small you. He sees a mighty warrior. When God sees you, he does not see the shy you. He sees a mighty warrior. When God sees you, 
he does not see um, a weak you. He sees a mighty, a mighty warrior. And if God sees you as a mighty warrior, it means that it's high time that you begin operating as a mighty warrior. You begin operating as a mighty warrior. And so today, in the book of God, that is the Bible, in the word of God, we are going to see somebody who also viewed himself as being very weak, as being very small, but yet God saw him as a mighty warrior, and God was ready to use him as a who? As a mighty warrior. Do you know the name of this person? I'm taking guesses. Please, take a guess. Who do you think this um, person is? Who do you think this person is? Waiting. Marvins and daddies, please listen to um, the guesses that the young ones have. Yes, his story is found in the book of Judges, where we are going to read. So, am I, am I painting a picture? Hmm? Am I painting a picture? His name starts with a G. His name starts with a G. Any idea? A G? Gideon, yes. If you guessed Gideon, clap for yourself. If you didn't guess Gideon, that was a very good attempt. But then, now you, now you know. So, as we usually do, getting into our Bibles, I'd like us to get into the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, chapter 6. Are you there? Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. Judges is in the? Judges is in the Old Testament. Yes. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? If you're there, say amen. If you're there, say amen. Mummies, daddies, guardians, help the young ones get to Judges. We are saying we are in Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to Verse 1 to 16. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. Hoping that we are all there. Hoping that we are all there. I am there personally. Hoping that we are all there. So, before we even have our reading, I'd like us to make our declaration. Are you ready? Are you ready? So, everyone, lifting up your Bible. Lifting up your Bible. Let's make this declaration together. On the count of 3, 2, 1, go. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I love my Bible. It's a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. As I read God's word today, I open my heart to receive it. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. And so getting to Judges, getting to Judges, getting to Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Are you there? And so we are going to read. This is what it says. The Israelites did evil in the sight, in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east will attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. The enemy hordes coming with their livestock and tents were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. Verse 6. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cry, cried out to the Lord for help. Verse 7, when they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you the land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord, verse 11, came and sat beneath the great tree of Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. 
In another translation, it says, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Verse 13. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now, the Lord has abandoned and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue the Israelites from rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Verse 15. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, Verse 16, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites if, as if you are fighting against one man. I will. And so, where is the point where we have read? At this point, the children of Israel have done what? Have already settled in their promised land. And so they have become farmers. And yeah, and they are keeping, um, they are keeping um, flocks of cattle, sheep, and all with them. And so they are doing this and they are pasturing all over, all over the villages where they live. And so... The Midianites, on the other hand, they decide to, yes, um, plunder the Israelites. That means they decided to come over into the land of Israel and do what? And still, and so they decide to come and take quite a lot, quite a lot from the, from the children of Israel. And so, um, looking at it uh, from, just, uh, from just a little way, far, a little way back, The Midianites themselves were a nomadic people. That means they were people who used to move around um, all over the place with, uh, with, with cattle. And so um, it was easy for them to actually attack and even plunder Israelites because of their, their, their way in which they, they, they moved around. And so these Midianites used to wait, especially when the children of Israel were just nearly harvesting their crops. These Midianites would come and take over the land, harvest everything, carry their livestock, their goats, their sheep, everything, and ensure that they have left the whole land empty without anything. They have carried everything and they go away with it. And so it was at this point that we come and discover the person that is Gideon. How do we discover him? We discover him because he is at a place where he is hiding, a place that is called a wine press. And so he is at the place where he has run because of the oppression that means because of the hardship they were, they were uh, experiencing from the, from the Midianites. And so, looking at the life of this um, person called Gideon, his name referred to one as, as one who used to cut down things or fell down things. And so that was Gideon. But then, uh, this name was, was given to him because he tore down the, the, the temple, or rather the pole that was for Asherah, in honor of God, Jehovah. And so, because of this, that's how he ended up being referred as one who casts down, or one who fells down, or one who brings down um, as the meaning to his name. And so we find Gideon, where? Hiding. Where? In a wine press. What was he doing in a, in a wine press there? He was... He was threshing grain. That means he, he had a little harvest, and he decided that he'll go and hide there and actually be able to thresh this harvest so that he can have some grain. And so here is where Gideon encounters God. Eh? And then while he's acting out of fear, God calls him out and God calls him a who? A mighty warrior. And so I would like also to ask you, are there areas where you feel that um, you need to hide? Are there areas also where you feel that um, maybe things have been so difficult for you that you don't need to stay put wherever you are? For example, uh, right now you are at home. And let's say uh, maybe your friends have taken issue with you. They may be uh, referring you to as a coward because maybe they are indulging in behaviors that are not right. And they've tried to uh, push you to also join them but you refuse. And so in refusing they've called you a coward. 
And so every time you're out there and you see them, they call you a coward. And so that might have made you feel like you don't want to go out anymore. You want to stay indoors, closed in, and hiding, just as Gideon was hiding. Is that true? Or maybe something else has happened to you in the sense that um, you are at home, maybe with your siblings, that means with your brothers and sisters, and maybe you did something wrong and they laughed at you and they did not uh, rub well with you. And so you have been feeling like um, you're missing or lacking in a way. And so you find yourself detached from, from them. Is that you? Are you like Gideon? How Gideon was detached from everyone else and he was at a place where he was hiding and uh, he did not look like he had a lot of faith. Even when God was calling him a mighty warrior, he did not look like it. Are you at that place? We are saying that um, our sermon series or our lesson for today says seeing what God sees. At that place where you are at, where you've detached yourself, where you've kept yourself away from those people that you think um, you need to hide from or you need to disengage from, are you really seeing what God sees? In the same way as God called Gideon a mighty warrior, God is also calling you a mighty warrior as you hide there. And so God needs to use you to do so much for his name and for his glory. So many exploits and so many things, but then he cannot do, he cannot use them to do he cannot use you to do them while you are still in her hiding. Yeah? He, cannot use, he cannot use you to do them while you still think like uh, that song that we sang, that you are a little tiny baby in his hands. No, God is calling you today a mighty warrior. That means somebody who is full of courage, boldness, and a lot of strength. Let me ask you, since a lot of you watch TV, which characters do you know are courageous, bold, and full of strength? Uh -huh. Give me one. Uh -huh. Another one. Uh -huh. Another one. Uh -huh. Another one. Uh -huh. So like those characters, that's the kind of person that God saw in Gideon. And that is the same kind of person that God is seeing in you today. today. And so, God is calling you to stand up. So that he can, be, he can use your stand to be able to fight and bring victories to those who are around you. So, at that point, when you're feeling weak, at that point, when you're feeling like you're not all, at that point, when you're, when you're, when you're feeling like um, nobody wants to be with you, or when you're feeling like, um, in a way, you're a failure, and this might not just be with your friends or brothers, probably in school. Um, you did not perform very well. And maybe now you're feeling like you don't even want for schools to reopen because you don't want uh, people looking at you in a type of way. You don't want people referring to you, to the grades that you've got, you see? And, and all and all. And so does that make you feel? That sometimes makes you feel very bad. Makes you feel like um, you don't want to be part of it anymore. And sometimes we find ourselves blaming God. Just like Gideon did. Huh? Gideon here, when the angel of God spoke to him, he asked the angel of God, where, where have you been? Are you the, still the same, same God? I would like us to go back to the, to the Bible, to where we, we've read. Hmm? In uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. And so, uh, Gideon asked the Lord in verse number 13, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And so in a way, he's wondering, where is God? And then he asks, where are all his miracles, which our fathers spoke to us about? Eh? Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us. So in those times, in those times when you feel like you're weak, that you want to disengage, that you don't want to be with people, are you like Gideon? Are you at the place whereby you look at God and you wonder, God, where are you? In the place where I've gotten these low grades, where are you? I prayed, I trusted in you. You promised me that you'll, that you'll give me excellence. Even your word says that I am the head and not the tail. I am meant for good works. Where are they? Do you find yourself also blaming God for the troubles that you're going through? Eh? Or do you see yourself as a mighty warrior, even through whatever it is that you're going through? And so, we need to ask ourselves, how do we see ourselves? Do we see what God sees? Or do we see our own things? From where you are at right now, when you look at yourself, do you see what God sees in you? Or do you see uh, these other things that you, you choose to see? 
do you blame God for what is happening to you? Or um, do you look back at the place where you can say, I am really proud of what God sees in me because what God sees in me, that is what I am. And so, going back to that phrase that I told you, we we'll repeatedly allude to or we we'll repeatedly go back to. It says, I may not look like it, but God sees me or God regards me as a mighty warrior. That means it has nothing to do with looks. Eh? You may not have muscles. Let me look. I know this is a very interesting example. But let me show you my biceps. I also don't have a lot of muscle, as you can see. But God sees me too as a what? As a mighty warrior. It is not, nothing to do with muscles. Eh? I may not be looking as tall as a soldier. Eh? But God sees me as a, as a mighty warrior. I may not be speaking with a lot of authority, like an army leader. Eh? Have you ever seen uh, those army commanders speak? Eh? They speak until their voice um, revibrates. That means their voice, they speak with a lot of power and authority. I may not have that. However, God sees me as a mighty warrior. Because I am not, my, I am not a mighty warrior because of how I look or because of what I have. No, I am a mighty warrior because God is with me. And so his, present, his presence makes me who? Makes me a mighty warrior. And so, do you blame God? Do you look down on yourself? Or do you see yourself as a mighty warrior? And so, for us to live away from doubts, eh, those doubts that you, we say that you usually ask yourself, is God really with me? Has God forsaken me? God, you said this, this in your word. Where are you when this is happening to me? In order to walk away from those doubts and those fears, we need to get to a place whereby we learn a few things. Where we learn a few a few things. And so, picking up your pens and, and papers, your pens and, and books, this is what I'd like you to write. I'd like you to first write the statement that we've said. That one, I may not look like it. That means I may not look like I'm that mighty. But God regards me as a mighty warrior. So, I may not look like it, but God sees me, regards me, acknowledges me, calls me a mighty warrior. I may not look like it, but God regards me as a mighty, as a mighty warrior. And so, as we look at those things that act as doubts, those things that act as things that cause us to feel bad when we disengage from others, those, those things you find, they're limiting us. When we say that, I don't want to go with, play with my friends because they think I am a coward, you know, that limits you to actually living your best life, like we learned last week, living your best life now, because you're operating from things that you've experienced, you're operating from things that have happened in the past, but God is calling you to live in the pre present. And living in the present means that God is calling you to be a mighty, a mighty warrior. And so, here, as we are saying, that for us to step into being, or into seeing ourselves as God sees us, for us to step into being mighty warriors, what do we need to do? Number one, we need to know that what God sees in us is more reliable than what we see or feel. What God sees in us is more reliable than what we see or feel. We have said that we may not look like it, but God regards us as a mighty warrior. So God regarding us as a mighty warrior is more reliable than what we see or we feel. That means God, actually, you being the mighty warrior that God calls you to be, is more reliable than that feeling of, that feeling of, that feeling of uh, wanting to disengage from people, that feeling of um, I do not have enough energy, I do not have what it takes, this is beyond me, this is above me, I, I am not, I am not with it, we are saying that what God sees in us is more reliable than what we see or feel. And that means that any time that we see ourselves as being tiny, we see ourselves as being weak, we see ourselves as not having enough energy, wisdom, intellect, power to do that which God has called us to, we need to remind ourselves that what we see is not as reliable as that which God sees in in us, and so we need to see ourselves in the perspective that God sees us. And so, don't see weaknesses. 
God calls you a mighty man of war, a mighty man of valor, a mighty man of strength. See the strengths that are with are with you. Don't see the impossibilities. See the God possibilities that are with you. Don't see the defeat. See the victories that God has ordained for you. Don't look at yourself and say, I cannot make it. No. Look at yourself and say, I can make it through Christ who strengthens me. Don't look at yourself and say, I am not good enough. No. Say that I am God's best for my season and for the time that I am in. Don't look at yourself and say, I will not be able to do it. No. Look at yourself and say, I have the ability through God who strengthens me. Because as we've said, we may not look like it. However, God regards us as a mighty warrior. God regards you as a mighty warrior. God regards you as a mighty warrior. And so to our point number one, we have said what God sees in us is more reliable than what we see or think about ourselves or even feel. What God sees in us is more reliable than what we see, feel or think about ourselves. Is that fine? Is that fine? And to our point number two, it says that where I am from and what I am from are small issues compared to what is going within me. That means where I am from, that is where I live. Eh? And what I am from, that means the things that I have been experiencing in the past. Where I am from, eh? where I am from, maybe you are from a place whereby, let's say, you are from a place whereby, uh, like me, people are not uh, well built, they are not tall, and they are not muscular. That is the family you are from. You are from a place whereby um, people maybe speak with very calm and low tones. They don't speak with a lot of shouts and bursts of authority. You see? And what I am from, that means the things that you've experienced in the past might not be the biggest things. Maybe you are not born in a family where everybody is a military officer. You are not born in a family where everyone is um, athletic or um, is into sports. You see? But then that does not mean that you are not that which God sees you are. No, that does not mean so. We are saying that all those small, though all those are small issues compared with what God sees in you or who God sees you. You see? And so you need to ask yourself, just like Gideon. Gideon was, a, was from a place whereby he says that I am from the least tribe. And also, in my family, I am among the least ones. And so that's how he saw himself. And so when God is calling him a mighty warrior, he sees himself from a place whereby he is among us the least. But we are saying that where we are from and what we are from are small issues compared with what is going on within us. And so in the same, same way, God saw in Gideon a mighty warrior. He did not see Gideon from the tribe that he was from. He did not see Gideon from the family that he was from. No, he saw him from that which is within him. And so within you, that which God sees in you is more than that which you might think you are from. Yes, you may be from a family that is not very wealthy, but that does not mean that you are nothing. Still, God calls you a mighty warrior. You might be at a place whereby eh, eh, maybe you have very elder brothers and you are born as one among us, the least ones. And so you came up and found that there were very senior people in your family and you are not among the senior ones. That does not mean that you are not senior. No. God looks at what is within you. And what is within you is much greater than that which you are from or that where you are from. And so God calls you to a place of considering yourself as worthy of being used by him to do mighty exploits, to do signs and wonders, to do things that are beyond your time and age. Why? Because he's the one who does what? He's the one who enables, who enables us. And so, in the same way that God called Gideon from an average setting, eh? from an average setting is a normal setting, eh? from a comfort guy, eh? from um, a kawaida, Kawaida is in Israeli for a normal situation. To being the guy who led the 
Israelites to actually fight the Midian knights. That's the same way God is calling you so that he may use you to do what? To actually fight the issues that are around you. Because, like we said, we need to see ourselves from what? Or from how God does what? From how God sees us. Is that fine? Is that fine? Is that fine? And so at this moment, I'd like us to look back at how many people um, God used Gideon um, to bring down. We have said that the Midianites, what were they? They were pastoralists, and they were nomads who used to move from here to there. And we say that they used to plunder Israel. That means they used to take everything that was with the Israelites and leave their lands bare. And so, just imagine, they will attack like 200,000 of them in an area and be able to finish off everything. And it is Gide this Gideon, this Gideon that God called him a mighty man of war, that God used, plus three other, three other, 300 other doubtful armed Israelites to fight an army of 200,000 and to finish them completely. You see, God used 300 people to eliminate 200,000 Midianites. And so, when you look at yourself, you realize that God does not regard you just as a normal person. No. God regards you as a who? As a mighty warrior. God regards you as a who? As a mighty warrior. And so, like we say, we may not look like it. We may not look like it. But God regards us as a mighty, as a mighty warrior. And so if the same same God that is the God of Gideon is operation is in operation in your life, just think how many things you can be able to solve, how many things you can be able to take down, how many things you can be able to overcome, how many things you can be able to be used by God to control and take charge over. Because God is using you and is using you as a mighty warrior. And so in this new season that we are in, we need to find ourselves at a place whereby we have overcome all our limitations, all our fears, all things that have to do with bondage, with lack of freedom, things that limit us and put us down so that we can be able to experience all that God is calling us, all that God is calling us to. Because we are saying that God is calling us to a place whereby he's using us to write new stories, just like Gideon wrote a new story. And so God wants to use you to write a very new story. And the only way that God is going to use you to write a story is if you see yourself from the perspective or from the sight that God sees you. And so you need to see yourself in the way God does what? God sees you. And so there are so many issues around you that God wants to take care using you. Using you the mighty man of war. Using you the mighty war, the mighty warrior. And so you need to stand up in courage and... Say that I may not look like it, but I am thankful because God regards me as a mighty warrior. And so standing up and taking charge, I'll be able to take care of all the issues, all the issues that God is calling me to. Is that fine? Is that fine? And so, as we have said, we need to do what? We need to see ourselves from the perspective that God sees us. Yes, we may not look like it. We may not look like it. We may not look like it. We may not look like it, but thank God that he sees us as a mighty warrior. And he calls us to be mighty in the things that we do. Is that fine? Is that fine? And so at this point, I would like to ask you, are you there? And you've been seeing yourself um, as a weak uh, person. Have you been doubting that which God says to you? Have you been at a place whereby you're not sure of where you need to go? Have you been walking in fear? Are you that person? If you're that person, I would like to invite you at this place so that we can pray together and seek God for forgiveness. Yes, because God calls us not to walk in fear, but he calls us to walk in the strength of his might. And so you realize that when we walk in fear, when we walk in, um, in uncertainty, when we walk like cowards, we are walking in sin because that is not what God has called us to. And so if you are that person, I'd like you to pray this with me so that we can ask God to forgive us and so that we can ask God to lead us in a place of walking with, walking with him. Is that fine? And so let's pray. Father, this morning we thank you. We bless you because you've called us out, mighty Father, to see ourselves from how or from that which you see in us, dear God. 
you have told us, dear master, that we may not look like it, but you regard us as mighty warriors. And so, Lord, we come before your presence, repentant, dear God, and seeking for forgiveness for areas where we have walked in courage, for areas where we have allowed intimidation, mighty Father, to take root in our hearts and for us to walk in fear, for us to walk, mighty Father, not being sure of that which you say in our lives, for us, mighty Father, to walk in a place where, dear God, we do not walk in the fullness of the might and the power that you've called us to walk in. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for where we've let situations, dear God, cause us to walk in as cowards, dear God, and to walk, mighty Father, in the ways that are not pleasing to you. And Lord, we pray, mighty Father, that you who has called us out, mighty Father, to step out in courage, in boldness, in strength, mighty Father, in might and in the victory that you've given unto us, that you're going to cause us to be mighty warriors in our day and age, that you're going to cause us to live for everything that you have called us to, and that you're going to cause us, mighty Father, to, yes, Lord, step up and be used of you, mighty Father, to do all that you've called us to do. Help us see ourselves the way you see us, dear God, and help us rise up, dear God, and be mighty Father, warriors in our day and age. We worship you because you're God, and we thank you because you indeed are causing us to rise up and be warriors in our time. For this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. And all those children said, Amen and Amen and Amen. And right there at home, or wherever you're watching us from, you might be at a place whereby you don't even know this God who calls you as a mighty warrior, who calls you out to the place of stepping out and being that which he has called you, who calls you to be, yes, the solution to the problems that are around you. And so if you don't know him, here's an opportune time for you to get to know him. And how do we get to know him? We get to know him by confessing his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our God, as our King, as the Lord of our lives. And once you've made that confession, you look forward to living and you actually step up to live the life that he has called you to live. And so if you would want to receive this God, if you would want to know Jesus, if you would want to receive this God who gives you the power to be a mighty warrior, pray this with me. And so together, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have lived in ways that are not pleasing to you. This morning, I pray that, Lord, you may forgive me of my sins, and I commit my life to you, that you may be my Lord and my Savior, be my King and my Guide, and from this day, I make a choice to live for you. I refuse all the works of sin, and I choose to live a life righteous for you. Indeed, write my name in the books, in the Lamb's Book of Life, and from today, I choose you as my Lord and Savior. For this I do pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And if you pray that prayer with me, I'd like to welcome you into the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God. And as you are a child of God, I'd like to invite you to walk in the might that God has called you to. That you may see yourself in the way that God sees you and that you may walk as a mighty warrior. And even as we do so, you know heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing because you have become one in the kingdom of God. And so as we rejoice, I would like to welcome you to all get up on your feet and to join the worship team, even as we declare the goodness of this God that we serve, of this God who calls us a mighty warrior. So let's go right ahead and lift up a shout to Jehovah, even as we declare his praises together with the worship team.
you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. And for account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or fast fruits or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can send an RTGS or write a check to International Christian Center Mombasa. Our account number is 100,0233. And our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. And finally, you can give through our website at iccmombasa.org. Simply click on the giving button and follow the instructions on the page. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. I hope you've declared the praises of God. Have you? Have you? Have you declared the praises of God? And I also hope that you've given to Jesus eh, your offerings and money for Jesus. Have you done so? Have you done so? And so at this moment, we have come to the end of our service. And so today, we have looked at seeing what God sees. And I hope and pray that at this moment, you're seeing what God sees in your life. You're seeing yourself as God sees you. You're seeing yourself as the mighty warrior. Remember we said that we may not look like it, but God regards us as a mighty, a mighty warrior. And so through this week, I would like to invite you to go into the week knowing that you are a mighty, a mighty warrior and to step out in courage and boldness knowing that you are a mighty warrior because God calls you so and is going to use you to be able to do mighty exploits in our, in our day. So at this moment, I'd like to wish you a very lovely week ahead. All the blessings of God upon you and that you're going to experience every good thing that God has for you. Just wait before you leave. We are headed to e to Easter. How many are excited about Easter? I hope you are ready and excited about Easter. And you know that Jesus is the reason for the, for the season. That means you appreciate that which Jesus did, did for us by dying on the, on the cross. So I wish you a great turn into your Easter celebrations. And indeed a wonderful time through and through. God bless and be with you and catch you on. And the next time when we gather again for church here at IC Mombasa. God bless and be with you. And from all of us at church, we wish you a great week ahead, a blessed time, and even a great time through Easter. Bye-bye.